So I'm currently in the middle of a two-week residency at the Malva Residency in North Wales. In the background you can see a set of terraced houses and one of those is where the residency is. And it's so random because um, we're in the middle of nowhere here. There's woods behind me and then there's the estuary there. And they just stood on their own. Um, it's like an amazing place to be spending time. I arrived last Saturday and I'm leaving next Saturday, so I've been here a week. I am working on a video that kind of talks about the residency as a whole, which won't be finished till after I've left. And there's another video from when my friend Sam came and did some filming. So there's a couple more things that are coming about this residency, but I thought today I'd do like a day in the lifestyle vlog. And when I say day in the life, I mean as an artist on a residency, this is not a typical day in the life of an artist because that would be, a typical day would be a whole lot of admin and not very interesting to watch. So yeah, thought I'd take you along with me today. I've already walked Winnie this morning. We're staying on the top floor, so can't just let her out in the garden. So I've been for a little walk already. And um, I'm heading out now to do some sketching and painting. So this has become one of my favorite places to work through this <laughs> patch of brambles. Um, let's just move that out of the way. It's quite hidden away and it's really beautiful. There's normally a really dramatic view of hills here but um, yeah it's been misty the last couple of days. It's weird they're such a prominent feature and then they just disappear for a while when the mist comes in. Anyway I thought I'd perch here and do some sketching. This is actually the spot where I created a reduction print a couple of days ago when my friend Sam was filming me. So I know this view well, although it looks very different today because of the fog. I just love the colour of the lights in here. I think that's why I keep coming back to this spot. I always find it so disconcerting how different my sketches and paintings are to my wood engravings. I think Winnie's getting a bit bored now, so I'm gonna head to another spot. Probably a bit more sheltered because it's windy here. Um, maybe up in the woods. I feel like I've walked into a cloud up here. It's so misty. It's really beautiful, but um, I'm trying to dry the painting so I can do another painting, but I feel like because it's really wet and a bit rainy, it's just getting wetter. It's not ideal. Anyway, I'm trying to find a slightly sheltered spot. I'm just going to, like, so much of me wants to just go back to the warm studio right now. I'm going to persevere. I really want to paint these trees in this mist. I feel like that's a good spot. I need to put the towel down there, otherwise it's going to be wet. A huge droplet just fell on my sketchbook, so, um, yeah. It's, uh, it's about getting the feel for the place. These are just, like, literally quick paintings that I'm doing, and then I've been going back and doing collages and monoprints inspired by them, so it's quite a nice way to quickly capture the landscape. And then, yeah, when I go back to the studio, I'll work from the sketches. I feel like I don't really need to wet the paintbrush or the book because everything's already so soggy. You may have noticed from my prints, like my favorite color is yellow. Um, I just love this like rich yellow. I used to be known for wearing a lot of yellow and one time I was stood on a station platform waiting to come home from uni and someone shouted at me that I looked like a banana. So ever since then I've been a little bit wary. Maybe you don't wear your yellow shoes with your yellow coat. Um, <laughs> 
but yeah, I love yellow. You can see the rain hitting the paper and kind of adding to it. Um, just gonna add a few bits of green. I feel like it is quite bright with that yellow. I always feel so exposed showing my sketches because they're just not things I'm confident with. I think I just need more practice. It's something I shy away from because, as I said, I don't feel very confident, but um, I do enjoy it and they do help give ideas for prints and collages. <laughs> hey, Wynne. This isn't for you. You've had your breakfast. So here's the sketch, or painting, whatever you want to call it, and that was the one I did earlier. And then we've got some sheep. You'll see why I sketched that in a minute. Um, this was at Fairborn Beach, um, which is about an hour, 50 minute walk from here. Um, that was where I just sketched this morning with the light chin, but from the other day. And then, where was this? Same. This was also where I just sketched down by the estuary. It's clearly my favourite spot. I just got back and I'm going to make myself a cup of tea and then get started in the studio. But first of all, I'm going to feed the birds. Right, so I'm gonna have, this is quite a squeaky chair. I'm gonna have a cup of tea and, um, oh, hey Winnie, are you gonna go to your bed? Go on in. Um, and then I'm gonna have a look at the paintings I just did and then probably create a couple of mono prints. Um, and then this afternoon, so it's about half 11, 12 at the moment. Um, this afternoon I'm going to carry on this block here that I started uh, yesterday. So I was working on it quite obsessively yesterday until quite late because I really wanted to progress with it. Um, and I'll t talk a little bit more about this block um, this afternoon. So I'm going to be inking up this bit of perspex and then taking them when I print from that. So I've just put a bit of a base colour down and I'm adding some darker tones um, with a paintbrush. And then I'm using a spatula to add the areas of the sandbanks. I feel like such a novice at mono printing. Every one I do doesn't seem to turn out how I want it. But um, I think I'm learning each time, but it's slow progress. I feel like I've made the foreground a bit dark, a bit too inky, so I'm just going over with this bristly brush to remove a bit of the ink. And then I'm just using an old rag just to remove any bits of ink where I want to add yellow. I found if I layer up too much ink, it just doesn't have a good effect for the mono print. So it's ready to print now. I never have much excitement with these anymore because I've done quite a lot of mono prints in the last week and they've all disappointed me. So I don't have high expectations, but as I said, I think I'm learning a little bit each time. So there's the print, there's what's left on the plate. It's one of my more successful ones, to be honest, but um, yeah, it's such a learning process. So there's the painting that inspired it. Obviously they're reverse of each other because the image flips with the mono print when you print it. So here are four mono prints that I've just made inspired by the sketches. Um, the tree one's not so successful I'd say, a bit clunky. Um, I like this one and this one but maybe that one's my favourite. 
here are some more that I've done since I've been here. And yeah, it's a whole learning process, but I'll probably end up cutting them up and collaging them anyway. So I've cleaned up the ink now and I'm having an, another tea and then some rice pudding that Ellis made. And Ellis is the artist I'm sharing with. Um, that's her paintings in the background. I will link her in the description of this video. But it was really nice rice pudding she made last night. So I'm having a bit of that. And now I'm going to move on to the sheep block that I showed you earlier. So I talk a little bit about this in the video that will be out in a week or so. But um, basically I was walking to the beach and it was high tide. And I noticed that some of the sheep had got themselves stranded on bits of grass. And some were just stood in the water because the grass had disappeared. So it was like quite a odd sight to see. Just these sheep just stood there waiting for the tide to recede. And um, I just thought I need to do a print of that or something. So I started this block because this is going to be a one color print. So it's going to be black ink on white paper. I'm aware that the water could end up looking like snow because it's going to be white. And I really want to make sure it looks like water. So I added in some tiny oyster catchers and an egret here. And there's a duck there or some kind of bird just to kind of suggest water, not snow. Um, I'm hoping the parallel horizontal lines will help the viewer know that it's water, but we'll see how it turns out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to finish here the water up there and then I'm probably going to work on the foreground today and then maybe tomorrow I'll be working on the sky. Um, so yeah, I am excited. It's quite different to prints I've done recently, but I just felt like I really needed to depict that scene because it was uh, an interesting thing to see. I'm guessing it happens quite a lot because there's so many sheep around here and I guess they just get so distracted by grazing they suddenly realise, hang on, we're stuck now, we're going to have to wait it out. And then later this afternoon I'm going to go get some food because I've basically run out and I've been eating pasta for a week now and I never thought I'd say this but I am so sick of pasta, I don't want to see pasta anymore. I turned into a student living in shared accommodation. I was just like, I don't know. I've, I've, um, yeah, I'm back in my student mindset of eating pasta out of Tupperware and, um, yeah, I want to go get something else. So I'm going to go do that after I've done a bit of engraving. just got back from a trip to Barmouth so I walked because um, it takes about the same amount of time to walk as it does to drive Winnie should we go this way because the bridge that I walked over only allows for pedestrians and trains so yeah you have to drive all the way around the estuary if you want to drive so it took about an hour and 15 got some shopping took it back and then I'm just walking Winnie for her last walk of the day in the woods. It's definitely the mistiest day we've had here so far I think and walking across the bridge was really strange because it just felt like there was nothing beyond the bridge and it's so weird because you know the views are so amazing on a clear day and then a day like this and it just disappears. It's amazing really how much the weather changes a place. As I mentioned I'm putting together a video of my time here um, and it will be out in a week or two. It will probably be interesting to see because in at least the start of that video you can see this place in sunlight and it's clear and today has been so different. And I talk about how I find the residency, what I learn. Um, I obviously haven't finished the video yet so I don't know how it ends um, because I'm only halfway through this experience. But yeah, do subscribe and click the notification bell if you haven't already so you know when that video comes out. This evening I'm probably going to begin editing this video and if I have time I'll engrave a bit more of the sheet block. I'm going to be making something for dinner that isn't pasta which is exciting. It's probably going to be soup and then I'm going to have mini eggs for dessert because I've been thinking about mini eggs all week so I'm excited about that. So yeah thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any questions about the residency and I'll try and answer them in the next video.